Did you know that G.I. Joe could be making a comeback on the big screen? Lorenzo Di Bonaventura, the producer behind Transformers Rise of the Beasts, recently talked about the future of the G.I. Joe franchise. While Transformers has become a massive hit, G.I. Joe has faced challenges in finding the same level of success. The classic action figure and beloved animated favorite are still figuring out what comes next after several big screen failures, including the 2021 reboot Snake Eyes. In an interview, Steve Weintraub about Transformers Rise of the Beasts, producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura mentioned that discussions are happening behind the scenes to bring the real American hero back to theaters. Snake Eyes was supposed to be a start of a new era of G.I. Joe movies, and the reboot G.I. Joe, Ever Vigilant, got pushed back to make way for it. However, with the spin-off facing challenges in the future of Ever Vigilant uncertain, some people are starting to wonder if the franchise might be better off returning to television. In 2021, a series was in the works by Hasbro and Paramount centered on Lady J, which would have connected to the larger world setup in the films. However, as noted by D. Bonaventura, that series never really became a reality. For now, it appears Paramount is not pursuing dual approach and instead aims to revive G.I. Joe in some manner, using the pilot's storyline as a basis for a future film. Based on the current rumors, Dwayne Johnson, Lee byung hoon Jonathan Price, Elodie Jung, DJ Contra, Adrian Paliki would all join the cast. However, an unexpected person in the list remains Jenna Ortega. Rumors have it, Jenna might join the cast, only time will tell. G.I. Joe doesn't have the best reputation in theaters. Whatever plans there are for a G.I. Joe film, it'll have a hard time convincing audiences given that every previous attempt has failed. Level 3 secure, moving to level 3. <laughs> The 2009's G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra has been criticized a lot since it came out, making fans, critics, and even the film stars angry. Channing Tatum, who was in the film because of a contract, talked about how much he hated the films even though he loves the G.I. Joe brand. He even asked to be killed off early in G.I. Joe Retaliation. That sequel also got bad reviews, although having Dwayne Johnson in it helped it to do better than the first one. The bad reputation had an impact on Snake Eyes, which reportedly lost money for Paramount. It has made just over $40 million at the box office, but its budget was $88 million, not including high costs for international marketing. As time goes on, the progress about G.I. Joe coming back to theaters is getting closer and closer. For now, D. Bonaventura is concentrating on Transformers Rise of the Beasts, which comes out on June 9th. It's exciting that Transformers and G.I. Joe are finally joining forces for a crossover movie. To make it the best it can be, the upcoming crossover should include the strongest elements from G.I. Joe's recent flop. Both Transformers and G.I. Joe have released several movies over the past decade with varying levels of success. Transformers Rise of the Beasts in 2023 was disappointing at the box office but received some positive reviews. On the other hand, Snake Eyes from 2021 was a complete flop, earning only $40 million. Because Transformers and G.I. Joe have a history of releasing disappointing movies, it's incredibly important they get the crossover right. This film needs the right cast, the right story, and the right special effects to meet the high expectations of the audience. Unfortunately, just having a lot of excitement and love for the franchises won't automatically make the Transformers G.I. Joe crossover a success. However, that brings up a major question. What does the movie need to do well? When it comes to casting, there is definitely a right answer. Henry Golding and the cast of Snake Eyes would be perfect for the Transformers G.I. Joe crossover. Including them would give the crossover a better chance of success. Even though the 2021 film failed at the box office, it's not necessarily the cast's fault. In fact, the most of the movie's reviews praise the efforts of Henry Golding, who starred in the film, while criticizing the movie's plot and lack of seriousness. If the Snake Eyes cast were given another chance to portray a G.I. Joe story, there might be a different outcome than what happened in 2021. While the Snake Eyes cast could be included in the next G.I. Joe installment, G.I. Joe Ever Vigilant, to showcase their talents, the Transformers G.I. Joe crossover also needs strong actors. Bringing in familiar faces would be beneficial too, and it might be confusing if new actors played the G.I. Joe characters in the crossover. Meanwhile, if Henry Golding returned for the crossover, it would save time spent on introducing new characters and bring in an actor who has already shown his ability to handle this role. Using the Snake Eyes cast in the Transformers G.I. Joe crossover gives the new G.I. Joe team a solid foundation. Overall, bringing them back would help set up G.I. Joe for success. Audiences would recognize the characters and expect strong performances from them. Alongside Transformers' cast, including Anthony Ramos, Noah Diaz, fans will be ready to jump right into the crossover without needing to meet too many characters. Therefore, the focus of the crossover can be on what will hopefully be a very exciting story. The guy behind the awesome G.I. Joe show is Ron Friedman. He's been writing TV stuff since the 60s, and he brought his own experiences and beliefs to the show. See, he went through some discrimination as a kid, 
though he made sure the show had some strong female characters and heroes from all kinds of backgrounds. The big message was all about teamwork beating selfishness. Now back in those days, making a TV show with a big complicated story was pretty rare, especially for kids, but Friedman convinced Sunbow, the studio, to make a five-part series instead of just one quick episode. He needed that extra time to introduce and develop all of the different characters. But having more time to tell the story also meant Friedman had to get in really creative. He had to blend together lots of little stories into one big adventure. Like in the first episode, it's like a mix of all your favorite adventure stories and stuff from pop culture. It kicks off with the bad guys, Cobra, building this crazy machine called the MASS device. It can zap stuff all over the world and even make things vanish. Naturally, Cobra uses it to cause chaos and snatch important people. So the good guys, the Joes, have to build their own mass device to stop them. They need three special things to make that mass device work, not just one. That's where Friedman's genius comes in. With three things to find, different Joes get to go on different missions, which keeps the story moving just right. So while some Joes are off on their missions, others are dealing with Cobra's big shots, Cobra Commander and Destro, who are always at each other's throats. Now let's talk about that first mission. It starts with a team of five Joes, like Scarlet and Snake Eyes, heading to the Arctic to find the special crystal. As soon as they step into the cave, bam, laser guns start blasting, and then they're stuck behind this huge metal wall, and sneaky robot defenders pop up and push them deeper into the cave where the crystals are. Snake Eyes dashes off to grab the crystals, while the others try to blast their way out. Cobra shows up, they're forced back into a cave, and then Major Blood goes and sets off a bomb, unleashing a nasty radioactive cloud. So Snake Eyes ends up sacrificing himself to save the team from that radioactive mess in the Arctic. He seals himself off with a cloud, and the others barely make it out. But when they return, they're empty-handed and missing one of their own. It's a big blow, especially for a kids' show. Now, the Joes are in trouble, and things are looking pretty bleak. Despite being all glowy from radiation, he manages to grab some crystals and sets off. Cobra probably thinks he's toast, but Snake Eyes keeps pushing on, stumbling around until he runs into a trapped wolf. Instead of leaving it, he helps the wolf out and they become best buds. So did you know Duke is one of the four miniseries? And he is one of the major concerns in the series and he goes closer to the ultimate answer. How did Transformers land on Earth? But he has to take on another mystery. What or who is the rumored Mars? and more surprises fall into the mix. To find out more, you should definitely watch the movie. So let us know about your thoughts in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Insurgent closing in, sir. D2 secure, no luck. Contact headquarters, I'm on that. Mount up, let's exfil. Runway secure. Mount up.